Welcome to week two. This segment will focus on the emergence of the international human rights system immediately after the end of World War II. It will show that freedom of expression and information was central to this construction and to the vision for humanity behind the Universal Declaration for Human Rights and indeed behind the establishment of the United Nations. This is 1948, three years after the end of World War II. In some five years, there had been 40 million deaths due to genocide, massacres, mass bombing, disease and starvation, and massive destruction throughout Europe, Africa, Asia, the Middle East. In June 1945, a few weeks after the end of the war, on 8th of May 1945, the Charter of the United Nations is adopted in San Francisco. Three years later, in 1948, the General Assembly of the United Nations adopt the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, also known as UDHR, the common standard of achievement for all people and all nations, the result of the experience of the Second World War. With this, the international community wove never again to allow such atrocities to recurate. Given the nature of the Second World War, and in particular of the genocide and other mass atrocities, it is not surprising that non-discrimination and equality constitute the key principle at the heart of the UDHR and indeed of successive human rights documents and the human rights vision. It is not just World War II. Human history is replete with instances of racism and intolerance giving rise to crimes against humanity and to genocide. So that the international community identified discrimination, racial or ethnic hatred as an abuse of human dignity, as well as a major cause of other massive violations, that is not surprising. And indeed, Racism, intolerance and discrimination are abhorrent and must be combated with the utmost determination. That is what the UDHR tell us. Less well known though, is the fact that the international and national bodies and courts worldwide have also insisted that the right to freedom of expression and information is central to the international human rights regime and to human dignity. And when you think about it, the emphasis and focus on the right to freedom of expression and information is also equally justified. Control over freedom of expression is the handmaiden of power. Without such control, power is inconceivable. It is an instrument to assist in the attainment, preservation and continuance of someone's power. Indeed, control over freedom of expression is the extension of physical power into the mind and into the spirit. All the greatest man-made calamities that have plagued the world for centuries, the Inquisition, slavery, the Holocaust, the genocides in Cambodia and Rwanda, the Soviet Gulag, and more recently now, the ISIS sectarian killings and massacres. They not only involved but they are required full control over expression, opinions, and indeed at times conscience. At the same time, as they have mandated hatred over the others, hatred over people and the denial of their equality and of their humanity. And so it is not surprising that as, as early as 1946, at its very first session, the United Nations General Assembly adopted Resolution 59-1, which states, freedom of information is a fundamental human right and the touchstone of all the freedoms to which the United Nations is consecrated. Two years later, the Universal Declaration states in its preamble second paragraph, the advent of the world in which human beings shall enjoy freedom of speech and belief and freedom from fear and want has been proclaimed as the highest aspiration of the common people. And in Article 19, the UDHR proclaims everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek 
receive and import information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. The dual importance attributed to both non-discrimination and freedom of expression and information is also highlighted by the very fact that immediately after the end of the war, the United Nations established two sub-commissions. The first to be created was a sub-commission on freedom of information and of the press. It was short-lived, but its establishment is very revealing. The second subcommission was the prevention of discrimination and the protection of minorities. That subcommission had a much longer lifeline. The recognition of the centrality of freedom of expression and information to peace and security and human rights does not mean that its protection is uncontroversial. Far from it. In fact, by 1949 already, the initial post-war recognition is quickly becoming the victim of a new war the emerging Cold War between a Western bloc and an Eastern bloc, between capitalism and communism. At the time, the Canadian legal scholar John Humphrey, one of the drafters of the UDHR, described it as a deep incompatibility between the communist and liberal approach to the function of the press. And so, in the ten years following the end of the war, the United Nations will attempt on a number of occasions to adopt a convention on freedom of information, but that never happened. This included a now long forgotten draft convention on the international transmission of news, a convention on the right of correction. These were abandoned, a fate that also beset similar initiatives at the time, including a UK-led Convention on Freedom of Information, first adopted by the General Assembly of the United Nations in 1949, but abandoned shortly thereafter. Still, out of the many hit and miss of the first five years following the end of World War II, the world inherited the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, a beautiful text of intent, a beautiful vision for the world. It inherited a commitment to freedom of expression and information. And Article 19 of the UDHR, still to date the most generously stated commitment to freedom of expression and information. And I will leave you with the text of this article one more time because it has, by many standards, survived very well the test of time. Everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. In this first segment, we have reviewed the birth of the UN human rights system and in particular of the central place that freedom of expression and information played in that construction for human rights and that vision for peace and security. In the next segment, we will turn our attention to the implementation of this initial vision and aspiration the adoption of the International Covenant for Civil and Political Right and the establishment of the Human Rights Committee, the international body responsible for overseeing that state's respect for human rights, including Article 19 related to freedom of expression, is indeed implemented. Thank you.